Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with the Sense of Tempo Connie Corso. So I um, am doing a video today. No, uh-uh, uh get out of my face now. What's in your head? Go. I don't even know what you're thinking. Go lay down now. Now, I said. Belladonna, go lay down now. She is a hot mess. Yeah, I see you. So, um, I'm doing a video today on something that's very important. Um, I didn't... It's It's been something that I've considered doing a video about because it's um, been something that has been coming up um, over time. This is actually something that's been going on for a couple years now. Um, even before I was even involved with this breeder, but, um, but I didn't, you know, I didn't know about it. I didn't have any other dogs. And, um, and so I, I kind of within the last year became aware of it. So I've had comments on my videos about Sangue Magnifica that, um, people are accusing them of having epilepsy in their lines. And I really want to talk about this because there's a guy named Dan. Um, I don't know his last name. It's like Kirsten or something like that. Who knows how to pronounce it? Um, and he's been going around claiming that they have epilepsy. And, um, and so whenever I was considering getting a dog from them, I had another um, uh, breeder that, I would consider a friend that basically told me that Dan was his friend and that if I wanted to buy one of their dogs that I should at least talk to him because he said that he had uh, multiple cases of epilepsy and that there was proof and there was all these medical records and there was all this, you know, they had had autopsies and all this stuff. And so I, wanting to do my due diligence, contacted Dan and I called him. And I spoke with him. And, um, and I had the medical records um, from what he had posted because he's posted it everywhere. And, um, and I asked him if he had any other medical records because the medical records that he had posted did not prove epilepsy. In fact, they proved the opposite. They proved that it was not epilepsy. And he didn't understand that. And so I pointed out some things in the medical record that would have caused seizures. And he was unaware of that. He didn't know about it. And, um, and I asked him if he would be willing to send me the medical records of the other dogs that had been having seizures. And, um, and he said no. He said that if the medical records that I had were not enough, that nothing would be enough. And... Um, I went ahead and I, you know, he was like telling me his story or this or that and what was going on. And, um, and I think around four different times, Savannah was sitting in the car with me. I asked this guy very nicely for the medical records. I said, look, I, I understand that you think that it's all the same and that it won't matter to me and that, you know, this and that. I said, but, you know, at the very least, I would like to see evidence that more than just one dog even had seizures. And he refused to do it multiple times claiming that it wouldn't matter that they were all the same all the medical records were the same and it and it didn't matter so based upon that information me knowing and i will show you the medical records of that dog that um that was not epilepsy and therefore i couldn't just take his word for it that in fact all the dogs had epilepsy you know i'm not um I'm not that kind of person. You know what I mean? I'm not going to take someone's word for something just because they claim to have a lot of credibility and that they think that they're just, you know, this awesome person. So I already knew two other breeders that had um, these dogs from the same breeder and both of their dogs were, were, you know, older. I think at least one of them's four and the other one is six and they are very healthy. Um, one of them has been bred many times even they did a pretty controversial breeding, um, breeding to breeding him to his daughter, and still no epilepsy, no bad results. So, 
having real life experience with those lines and knowing that they didn't have any problems and then having this other person tell me hearsay and they had a medical record that they had posted everywhere. I mean, I'm talking like ripoff report all over Facebook and they're claiming that that report was proof of, of epilepsy when in fact it's the opposite. It's actually proof that it was not epilepsy. But convincing this guy of this is impossible because, because he believes he's right and there's nothing you can do about that. So, and no amount of scientific evidence will, um, will change his mind. And most recently he posted another, he actually, it was really rude. He took the winning photo from the show in Italy that I was at and shared it on his own page and made the bold claim that they produce the most epilepsy out of any breeder ever. Now, that in itself is false because I haven't seen um, him provide any evidence of epilepsy yet. But on top of that, to even claim that they produce the most epilepsy out of any other breeder is just pure slander. So what I want to do is I, is I, I want to try my best to add some facts and some science to this conversation. Um, so first off, what I want to do is talk to you guys about my experience with this breeder and with these dogs. So, um, the, the dog that is being blamed for producing epilepsy is the dog that was actually in my hotel room, um, for two days with me unsupervised, unmedicated. And, um, that's Scirocco. And um, amazing dog. I love him to pieces. Very popular stud. And so um, he was with me. His father, uh, I believe, is Murano. Murano was at the show. He's like 10 years old. When he was at the show, he was barking up a storm inside of the... Um, whenever he was actually in the, um, in the, in the ring. And... She was like, you know, Christina was trying to get him to like, you know, calm down, but he's just such a proud guy. You know what I mean? He's so happy to be there. And, and the truth is that if he had been medicated, he wouldn't be acting that way. So, and you guys saw the video of Scirocco obviously wasn't medicated. So for someone to allow, um, a stranger, practically stranger, they don't know me. I mean, they talk to me online, but you know how that is to have unfeathered access to their dogs is not the behavior of somebody that has something to hide. On top of that, these breeders are in an area that is not like America. In America, money tends to come fast, come easy. If, as long as you're willing to work, um, you know, you can usually, you know, you can get by. And employment is out there. In Croatia and in Serbia, that is not the case. Um, it is very hard to live in those places and unemployment is very high and the salaries are very low. So these are not the kinds of people that can take a huge risk with their lives like that. It's not so easy to just change your name and, you know, go about doing whatever you're going to do. On top of that, these, this kennel, Sangue Magnifica, is based on these lines. They are not a huge operation and they um, are working with the lines that they use every day. So the idea that they would be hiding something like this and then just going out and showing their dogs are extremely active. You'll be very hard pressed to find a kennel with as many world champion dogs as them. And, um, and so the idea that somehow that these people are breeding epileptic dogs and they're just hiding it is is it doesn't make sense when you actually go over there and you see the way that they operate i did video the kennel you guys saw it it's not a huge operation okay um, these people are always out there even with medication there's no guarantee that a dog will not have seizures if in fact they are epileptic so I mean, we're talking about people that are out there all the time showing their dogs, and yet we're supposed to believe that they're just chock full of epilepsy. It, it doesn't make any logical sense to me. Um, on top of that, why would they build their kennel off of it? You know what I mean? It, it's, 
it's counterproductive. You know, you might produce an amazing puppy and why would you take the risk of that puppy being sick? You know what I mean? Like, why would you build your kennel, your livelihood off of, um, off of sick dogs? It, it doesn't make any sense. It makes sense in America because people can get away with it. You know what I mean? You can easily just sell off those dogs or hide it or blame it on somebody else or whatever and make up a bunch of Facebook posts to hide what you're doing and, you know what I mean, buy new dogs. And it, it's, just, it's just easier to do that. But over there, it is not that easy. And when I was over there, the, the kennel is very renowned worldwide. People all over are using those dogs. The blood is all over. So it's only in America that these kinds of comments are being made. Now, does that mean that you'll never find a sick dog with Sangua Magnifica? No, absolutely not. Anyone can produce. I could produce a, an epileptic dog. Anyone can. We're all working with a closed gene pool. And any dog that they have is obviously came from other dogs. You know what I mean? Like we all have to some degree shared lines. And that's how, you know, when you look at a pedigree, that's the purpose of a pedigree is you can look back and you can see everything that's in there. So to, to blame one kennel for something when many people have the same lines just under a different name it's, it's dishonest. And, um, and I think that even Christina would admit that, which is the, um, one of the owners of Sangua Magnifica. They are a partnership. It's her and Branco. And so, you know, they're very practical people. And on top of that, I have to say literally some of the nicest people I've, I've ever met. And I'm not joking. When I came back, when, first of all, when I was over there, um, I was shocked by, how people behaved. I am very used to kind of the American way and I tend to stay to myself because of that. I'm not a very social person because of it. But whenever I was over there, it was different. And I actually was really sad to come back, to be honest with you, because I missed, you know, I knew that I would miss the, the honesty and the, the lack of fakeness over there. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it just was different. I'm not saying that every single European country is like that or every single person in those countries is like that. But I am saying that overall, when I was over there, people were not so sensitive. We were able to have open, honest conversations about all of our dogs' faults, about um, their strengths, about how to breed good dogs. It was a much more open conversation. Whereas in America, people tend to be very kennel blind. They're very protective over their kennel name. They even of their dogs. If you say that a dog has a fault, they take it as an insult and they get defensive. We don't really have these open lines of communication that is for the betterment of the breed like I witnessed over there. And that was extremely refreshing for me. Um, one of the people that I really respected over there was um, a um, a gentleman. Oh, um, oh my gosh, I cannot remember his name right now. My best friend and I were literally just talking about him. Um, Lazar, I think it was. Laz was it Lazar? Laz Lazar? Lazan? Okay. Anyway, he's a he's an Israeli um, veterinarian, and he works very closely with Sangue Magnifica. And he was a very intelligent person, very informed on many things, and obviously as a veterinarian would be. And, um, and he didn't have a problem with their dogs. And so if, if he doesn't have a problem with their dogs, then that's pretty good indication that they're not um, sick dogs. So that's my personal experience with them. Um, overseas, they have a much better understanding of genetics and breeding. Um, for example, those of you that have many children, um, you know that the more children you have, the higher the statistical chance that you could produce some type of abnormality. Does it mean that, for example, if you produce a child with a heart problem or autism or you know, um, nearsightedness or whatever it is, does it mean that anytime you produce an abnormality that 
your whole entire family line is prone to that? No. When somebody says, does a disease run in your family? What they mean is how prevalent is that disease in your family line? Okay. It doesn't mean one case. It means multiple cases. Okay. So Europeans, for the most part that I was working with, understood that. And they were joking about how in America, anytime a dog has something wrong, whether it be cherry eye, whether it be maybe you, um, you, you, know, you have a whole line of dogs and you produce one puppy with hip dysplasia, in America, it's like, oh God, you know, we joke, it's cut the line, cut the line, you know, like you can't breed them anymore. And it's this knee jerk reaction that really isn't based in science um, or reality. And it's, you know, it was a very eye opening experience for me. And that's why I said that I really believe that, you know, most Americans, especially breeders, um, should go over. You need to have a very open mind and you need to have more experience to be able to have the best overall knowledge base to know how to go about this. So, like I said, recently this guy, Dan, um, I'm guessing that he got mad because there were a couple, um, aside from myself and my best friend, there was another gentleman that went by the name of Jeff and he really had, um, as far as I understand it, a, a good experience there. And, um, and ended up, you know, really kind of having good conversations over there. So I, I'm guessing that maybe what happened is that Dan felt, uh, insecure that maybe the things that he had said were maybe not being taken as, um, as, as truth the way that they had been previously, because I know that Jeff took a picture with us and Sangua Magnifica and made a positive post about it. So I think that that might have had something to do with it. I don't know that that's the truth or not. That is purely speculation on my part. Um, so I commented, I was pretty mad to be honest with you, because it's having been with Christina and her husband and Branco and Nanad with Custodinos, they were such amazing people and so nice. I mean, they literally didn't let us buy anything. That's they, we were their guests. They paid for everything. They were so nice. They were so forthcoming with information and helping us and really trying to help Reese and I, my best friend, really understand everything about what they were looking at the dogs. And we should have paid them. Literally, we should have paid them for everything that we learned there. And to go from that and having that amazing hospitality and seeing these very humble people that live completely different than we do. Um, and they don't really have the same, um, you know, opportunities per se. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, 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 it's punching down. You know what I mean? Even though they produce amazing dogs, even though they have these world champion dogs, it is, it is horrible to hurt somebody's reputation like that, that lives in a place like that. And, and I'm, I'm trying to be kind of politically correct about it because I'm not trying to act like that these people are, you know, um, you know, super poor. I mean, they do have jobs, they have, you know, careers. They don't just make their, their livings off the dogs. Um, they literally have day jobs. And so, but you know, they've, this is, this is what they do. You know what I mean? Like it, this is not a game to them. Like it is for a lot of Americans, you know, it's not, it's, it's not the same thing. And I think that it's absolutely wrong, rude and punching down to, to attack someone's credibility and their reputation and their entire life's work off of unfounded, um, accusations. And so now I'm going to show you the medical report of the dog that is being um, blamed as having epilepsy, which is um, the, uh, the medical report that Dan had referenced. And when I saw this medical report, I immediately noticed something that would cause seizures. And I brought this up to him and he had no idea what I was talking about and really kind of just wrote it off and kind of just didn't even listen to me. You know what I mean? If, if he really would have listened to me, he would have understood that this dog does not have epilepsy, but he doesn't understand that. So this is the medical record. 
I have um, blacked out the owner's information up at the top to make sure that their confidential confidentiality is respected. That's another part is that Dan actually, the dog was not living with Dan. All of his stuff is hearsay as well. So here we have the dog. Um, she was admitted at 11.45 a.m. This was in August. Um, she, let's see here, she was discharged on the 5th. Um, she was kenneled overnight and um, says that at 5 a.m. she was having seizures. And then apparently she had two more at 8 a.m. I don't know why they didn't take the dog to the vet before that. Apparently she had seven to eight seizures, no prior history of seizures. She had a fever of 105.9, which is actually very high, but, act, but not unknown when you're having seizures. Um, so here we have the initial assessment. Seizures, R-O means, um, oh man, I just looked this up earlier. Um, rule out, ruling out idiopathic epilepsy. Um, and you can see right down here, it says here, explained that epilepsy can only definitively be diagnosed if all of the above diagnostics are negative. Recommended hospitalization, continued intravenous fluids to help continue to bring down the temperature. So here now we have the electrolyte level. The electrolyte level of this dog is 126.5. Now many of you already know that I have experience with dogs having a low electrolyte level. It does cause seizures. I know that. Um, you can see here the monitor of the temperature decreased to 104.6 within one hour after presentation. So that is the medical record of the dog. There's really nothing else. I mean, they, they treated the dog and as far as I know, um, she was eventually put down. So, and the, and the, the problem is that when you have seizures, if you don't handle the situation very quickly, those seizures can cause and often will cause irreversible damage to the brain. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into, um, we're going to go into actual epilepsy. Well, actually, you know what? Let's not. Let's go into the low electrolyte level since that's what we just talked about. So here we have a table. Um, it says here different degrees of electrolyte dis, uh, disturbances that most frequently, right, most frequently cause seizures. And that cut off, unfortunately. So hyponatremia. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so here we have electrolyte level of, that's mild of 130 um, to 134. Keep in mind the, the, um, the base levels, like normal level, is going to be anywhere between 154 and 140, I believe. Okay, So the level of having um, a 126 puts the dog in moderate, and severe is 125. So she's very close to having a very severe low electrolyte level. Okay? So we know from this and from the study I'm fixing to show you that this is a cause for seizure, okay? So we'll look here and we can see here, here's the condition, hyponatremia, whatever. I know I'm saying that wrong, pardon me. Um, it can be, you can get it from diarrhea, um, excessive water intake. That's the one that I told you guys that we had. And, um, and there are other... Um, situations, other causes, but this is the one right here that we want to pay attention to, okay? So now we're going to come over here and we can see here, acute symptomatic seizures caused by electrolyte disturbances. In this narrative review, we focus on acute systematic seizures occurring in subjects with electrolyte disturbances. Quite surprisingly, despite its clinical relevance, this issue has received very little attention in the scientific literature. Acute and severe electrolyte imbalances can manifest with seizures, which may be the sole presenting symptoms. Seizures are more frequently observed in patients with sodium disorders, especially, there we go, hyponatremia. Yeah, I tried harder that time. <laughs> um, let's see. They do not entail a diagnosis of epilepsy, but are classified as acute um, symptomatic seizures. Sorry, preacher is snoring right next to me. Um, so an acute...
pardon me, an accurate and prompt diagnosis should be established for a, for a successful management of seizures as rapid identification and correction of the underlying electrolyte disturbance rather than anti-epileptic anti treatment are of crucial importance in the control of seizures and prevention of permanent brain damage, okay? Now, one of the things that I want you to look at is that this dog was not treated for an electrolyte imbalance. She was treated for the seizures. You can see here, let's see here, summary instructions. We have elected to start treatment with anti-convulsive medication at this time. If Hennessy has a seizure, protect him, which is actually a her, from falling into sharp corners downstairs. Do not reach your hands into her mouth as she is not conscious and could unwillingly bite you. Hennessy has not had any further seizure activity and has been resting comfortably, eating well when offered, no vomiting noted. If Hennessy has a seizure that lasts longer than a few minutes or repeated seizures in a short period of time, this is an emergency. She should be seen by a veterinarian immediately. She should be seen by a veterinarian if she continues to have seizures to further discuss diagnostic tests and potentially adding an additional anti-seizure medication. You should keep a log at home to list and describe any further seizure episodes. She needs to have her phenobarbital levels checked in 21 days. Um, it is a very specific and time-sensitive text, uh, pardon me, test. So we can see here that she was treated with, um, with anti-epileptic Preacher, get up. Dude, seriously, go. Preacher, go. Move. Get down. Now, you're snoring. Go. Preacher, move. Go. Get down. Now, dude, your snoring is really bothering me. Go. Now, I'm trying to do this video and you're bothering me. Go. Get down. Now. Go. Go snore somewhere else. I love you, but go snore somebody else. Somewhere else. So, we can see here that the that what was look at this dog structure we can see here that what was necessary for this dog to get healthy was not um was not done i'm wondering if the vet because of what they said here the lack of scientific literature i'm wondering if the vet really wasn't aware of this as being a um a problem so we can see here that it says here an accurate and prompt diagnosis should be established um, for a successful management of seizures as rapid identification and correction of the underlying electrolyte disturbance rather than anti-epileptic treatment are of crucial importance. So we know that that did not take place. So um, now here we can see that electrolyte disturbances may affect the brain among many other organs and tissues and need to be promptly recognized as they lead to severe and life-threatening complications when overlooked and not appropriately treated, okay? So we can see here that what, what it's stating is that if you do not treat this appropriately and for what it is, that there are typically um, life-threatening issues with that, okay? So in this narrative re review, we focus on acute epileptic seizures occurring in, se in subjects with electrolyte disturbances. Quite surprisingly, despite its clinical rel relevance, this issue has received very little attention to the scientific literature, with only very few reveal reviews specifically dealing with electrolyte disturbances and seizures published so far. Um, I'm not going to read all of this. I highlighted what I, what I felt was the most important. To, to identify the electrolyte disturbances leading to seizures, a complete serum chemistry evaluation, including measurements of sodium, remember what I said, sodium, calcium, and magnesium should be performed in particular, when, uh, in, particular in subjects with first-time seizures. So this dog is literally exactly that. She had never had seizures before. All of a sudden, she had seizures and she had a low electrolyte level, okay? Hey, you guys quiet. I said stop, quiet down. All right, so this is the condition that I told you guys to pay attention to. Hyponatremia is defined as a serum sodium level of less than 135 and is considered severe when the serum level, hey! Quiet, now! Um, when the serum level is below 125, okay? Hey, stop it, I said. Get over here and be quiet. They're barking at the, the um, dog that's over here for boarding. So, um, it's 
now it now keep in mind like I said here with our last one it doesn't need to be severe for there to be seizures right different degrees of electrolyte disturbances that most frequently most frequently cause seizures right so any of these can cause seizures right any of these can um, so keep that in mind right this dog was well within range of having seizures in fact she was one degree away from severe all right let's see if i have any more highlights in here because it's just a bunch of scientific um stuff and i'm going to post the links to all this stuff for you guys because you know how i am i always like to make sure that you have all the facts so um the medical records here i also printed out the weather for the day because y'all know how extra i am um, that day, if, if we can trust that that dog was kept inside, then whatever. But um, as, uh, as House says, if you like to watch House, the show, um, you can see that, you know, or you will know that, you know, I think we all know people lie. You know what I mean? People lie. Nobody wants to be responsible for doing something that causes the death of an animal, right? Even if they did it, they wouldn't want to own it. So on that day, on the 4th, that was a hot day. It was August. And at 6 a.m., it was 88 degrees. This breed, depending upon the, the style of the dog, so how long the muzzle is, how open the nares are. These are nares, okay? So how open up the nostrils are. Um, depending upon how open they are, how short the muzzle is, and how much shade the dog has can really contribute to how hot an animal gets so this is well within range of a dog being overheated and if she had access to water and she was overheated she may very well have been um, consuming copious amounts of water to the point that she actually gave herself water um, water toxicity poisoning which is the hyponetremia or whatever the heck you want to call that i'm a texan don't blame me all right now this is just about epilepsy, okay? This is this is just about epilepsy. Um, so here's a good quote: "All the most acute, all the most acute, most powerful, and most deadly diseases, and those most difficult to be understood, fall upon the brain." Okay. Um, remember, anyone can post anything on the internet, so there's no guarantee the information is valid unless it comes from a reputable source. Now I want you to remember that the next time you see somebody say "Sangua magnifica" has epilepsy. Um, if they're not willing to post facts like I did, because this is what I'm telling you, I'm not telling you my opinion. All I'm doing is showing you the facts. I'm showing you the report and I'm showing you the medical, um, science on the matter. And I'm leaving it up to you to make your own decision. I have my own opinion. I have my own decision, but I am asking you to make your own decision. So what is epilepsy? Epilepsy simply refers to repeated seizures. Anything which damages the brain in the right area can cause epilepsy. If we can identify the cause of the seizures, say a brain tumor or a stroke, then we say the pet is systematic or secondary epilepsy. That is, the seizures are a symptom of a disease process we've been able to identify. If we've looked and can't find the cause, then we call it idiopathic or primary epilepsy. The term idiopathic epilepsy means that we don't know the cause. It may be that the cause has escaped our attention. For example, a stroke that is too small to detect without... Um, with routine brain scans or damage that occurred during whelping. How do we diagnose idiopathic epilepsy? Minimum workup for an epileptic. Okay, now there's a bunch of stuff, but what I wanted to show you was complete blood count, CBC, routine serum chemistry profile, and urine analysis. Blood and urine samples are taken and analyzed. Rules out metabolic causes of seizures and provides baseline data to monitor effects of medication. Now, Epile idiopathic epilepsy is a diagnosis by elimination. That is, we look for other causes of seizures. And if we can't find any, if we can't find any, we make the diagnosis of idiopathic epilepsy. Now, I want to ask you guys, when you look at that report and you look at the study that I just showed you, are there any reasons are there any possible causes for seizures in that dog? Well, yes, there are. Absolutely. So, 
can we logically conclude that that dog had epilepsy based on this definition? No. No, we cannot. In fact, that medical record actually proves that that dog does not have epilepsy. So anyone trying to use this medical report to prove that this kennel has epilepsy is being either ignorant or blatantly dishonest. And we know that because even the vet said down here, explained to the person that actually has been using this. Not only has Dan been using this, but the breeder that had this dog was also using this, despite the fact that they were told by the vet that epilepsy can only be definitively diagnosed if all of the above diagnostics are negative, okay? But we know that it's not because we have a cause right here because we have such a low electrolyte level, okay? So we know now that there's no way that that dog had epilepsy, but let's continue. Even if the animal is within the idiopathic epilepsy age range, we can't be sure it's idiopathic unless we perform the full complement of tests. One study, Podell 1995, showed that over one third of the dogs between one and five years of age that, um, pardon me, had an identifiable, identifiable cause for the seizures. Thus, we can make a case for aggressive testing in any epileptic dog, but need to weigh the additional cost involved in the equation. Which basically means, like, some people, like, for example, the, the people that had this dog, um, they chose not to get a... Um, uh, an MRI done or an autopsy done because they couldn't afford it. Even though Dan went around telling everyone that there was an autopsy, there actually was not one done. So all of this is just more into different kinds of seizures, all about epilepsy, blah, blah, blah. But the most important thing I wanted to show you was what epilepsy is and what it isn't and how we diagnose it. So it's very, 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 very irritating to me to have people out there blatantly slandering people that I find to be very ethical, very informed, very intelligent, um, that have very good dogs, and you have people out here that are blatantly slandering them. And I've seen text messages from Dan to the breeder because he had apparently bought three dogs from them, and he was claiming they all had epilepsy, but he would only provide the medical record for this one right here. And he was claiming that they all had epilepsy. And he wanted his money back for all of them. And she told him no. She's like, I'm not, you, you, you haven't provided any evidence that there is epilepsy. And I wouldn't either. I don't know of a breeder out there that would. Most, if not all breeders, it's in our contracts that you have to provide evidence that there is something wrong with the animal that is our fault. Okay? And he was unable to do that because... He, I, I'm guessing that those dogs didn't have seizures because I don't understand how it is that if he's willing to post this medical record, why isn't he willing to post the other ones? You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense to me, not from a logical perspective. He wanted money, and he even told her that if she didn't give him the money, that he was going to destroy her. You know what I mean? He was very, called her um, the B word. He was just extremely, extremely aggressive. And they've been... They've been too nice about it. Honestly, they've been too nice about it. I would have, I'm not like that. I'm not that nice. And I would have, I would have exposed them, but they, it's not a big deal to them. You know what I mean? Like they don't, they don't need American buyers. They're so popular overseas that their reputation cannot be tarnished by somebody over here, but only with Americans. You know what I mean? Like, People over here can tarnish their reputation here in America, but they can never tarnish it overseas. And when we were over there, we saw that. You know what I mean? It's like it's, it's – in fact, it was embarrassing. To be perfectly honest with you, it was embarrassing to be over there and have them, you know, looking at these dogs and praising these dogs. And everybody knows these dogs and understands them. And then they would sit around laughing about how Americans are, about how we – you know, we, we really have a very limited understanding of breeding and genetics, yet we go around trying to tell everyone else what they should and shouldn't do. And it's, 
it's embarrassing. That's all I can say. It is. Um, and I saw it and I was like, you know what? I'm done with it. Like, I'm going to say something. I'm going to stand up because not only is this man destroying or, or attempting to destroy their reputation, he's also going after anyone who has those lines. So people will go around saying, oh, well, you know, Senza Tempo has epilepsy and blah, 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 simply because I have a dog off them. But it's completely baseless and it's based on rumor. And like most things, oftentimes rumor is not true and it's really sad. And so I wanted to sit down with you guys and actually have a, uh, an honest and intelligent and a scientific conversation about the subject and specifically about the dog that is being blamed for this and to talk about the individual that is doing this and help you guys understand that this person has a financial incentive. He claims he doesn't. But if he didn't, he wouldn't have been asking for money. If he really felt that they were just producing horrible sick dogs, he wouldn't have said, hey, um, I'll, you know, I won't say anything if you pay me. But if you don't pay me, then I'm going to go out and I'm going to say all this stuff. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So I, I, I ask you, I beg you, as you go about your life in anything, in anything, I don't care what it is. Don't just believe what you hear. Do your research, okay? Because oftentimes things are not as they seem. And the only way that, that greedy and dishonest people can manipulate you is if you're unwilling to do the research yourself and find out the truth for yourself, which is what I did. Okay. I didn't just believe the breeder. I didn't just believe the rumor. I did my due diligence. I talked to the person that was making the accusations. I talked to the breeder and then I actually went and I traveled across the world or wherever far away Croatia is. It felt like across the world, um, over the ocean to go over there and see for myself. And I can tell you that I trust them a hundred percent. Absolutely a hundred percent. Not only do they have amazing healthy dogs, but they're amazing people. I can't say enough about them, literally. Like I wanted to move to Serbia, like, like straight up. Croatia is beautiful. Um, you know, I just, the, the people, I love them. Nanad with, with um, you know, Custodinos, amazing person. I can't say enough about them. You know what I mean? Amazing, amazing people. And, and they deserve more than slander, baseless slander when they're producing such amazing dogs. So don't believe what you hear. Don't believe me. Do your research. Read these studies. Know the truth for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. Know the reality because you looked it up for yourself and because you did your research and, and you will be not only a better person for it, but you will learn, you will grow, and you will learn how to distinguish between gossip and truth. Okay, I know this is a long video. Those of you that made it to the end, I really appreciate your attention and your willingness to go on this journey with me to really get to the bottom of these rumors. Um, I will not tolerate any baseless claims that, you know what I mean? It's just, it's ridiculous. No one's perfect. Anyone can produce epilepsy. You don't get to call a breeder a bad breeder or a person that produces epilepsy and they're just breeding epilepsy unless they're breeding it consistently, unless it's happening all the time. You know what I mean? Like it needs to be more than just one dog. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's anyone can do that. We all have the same stuff. This is a closed breeding group. What do you, I mean, it's, you could produce it. You know what I mean? You yourself could produce a child with epilepsy. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that your family lines are epileptic. You know what I mean? I, it was so funny when we were over there. We we're like, cut the line, cut the line. And I was, I was wishing that I could bring that here because it was so funny. But the truth is nobody, you know, people don't get it here because, because in America, people think that if a dog has a problem, you shouldn't breed it. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't, it, if you removed every single dog out of every single breeding program that had any kind of problem, you would have no breeds. 
Just like if you stopped anyone from breeding, uh, like humans that ever produced a problem, you people wouldn't be able to breed. Nobody's perfect. Even wild animals produce abnormalities. I mean, get with science, man. <laughs> like seriously, like get with science, please. Okay, because it you will understand it then. All right. So. Um, I hope you guys are having a good day. Like I said, I know this is a long video, but there was really no other way for me to do it. Um, and I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll talk at you later. Bye. <laughs> good boy. Yes, you are. Would you do good boy? Would you do good boy? Did you say bye? Would you do say bye? You're just my baby. Would you do my baby? Okay, all right, bye. <laughs> He's good.